Greetings today from Botswana. I feel a little bit moved and I'm not sure why, but I want to expose a certain angel of light. As we see this in scripture, one thing that, that disturbs me a lot today is that we have a lot of warnings about spiritual deception in the end times, but it's almost as if no one believes it will happen. Or if it happens, it won't involve them because they're already somehow immune to it or beyond it. And I really just want to bring this case out because if there is ever someone that I thought of as fitting the description of, you know, Satan coming as an angel of light, it's this person here today. But it could step on some toes, and I don't mean to offend because I'm not really even trying to assassinate this person's character, but to try to give you a warning and to really watch out and test the spirits. It's just so important uh, that we would test the spirits. And so I have made uh, a study of a certain individual. This was actually from years ago. I had to do some refreshing, and that is Billy Graham. Uh, Billy Graham passed away in 2018. I believe he was 99 years old, I think. So he lived a good long life. Many people revere him a lot. And I think most of the time they revere him too much. We need to understand that salvation comes from the Lord. We'll remember the warning that Jesus gave in the parable of the tares among the wheat. And how he said to let the tares grow with the wheat, lest some of the good wheat should be pulled out if the others were being plucked out as well. But I just wanted to give you some of these facts about, about Billy Graham. But one of the first things that happened to me, that happened with me, was after I had, I had gone through the, the falling away, backsliding period and come back to the Lord, there was a time I saw in the newspaper, I saw an article just saying, you know, it, it was, I don't know, praising Billy Graham. It said he was going over to then the Soviet Union. You might remember the great communist countries that were in Eastern Europe at that time. And he was visiting these countries and it was saying how all of these countries just loved Billy Graham coming over there. These were godless communist countries. How could they possibly love Billy Graham coming over there if he's preaching the real gospel of Jesus? And at the same time that I'm seeing this in the newspaper, I was reading through the gospel of John, especially in chapters 5 through 12, where it's like Jesus is being chased around the countryside by Jews that want to stone him. And so I don't understand how it is that the perfect creator of the universe was under such persecution, but Billy Graham apparently is loved by everyone. And unfortunately, only too many people say, well, that's Billy Graham. He had the anointing. It's the way it is. I wasn't buying it even at that time, but I didn't look into it any further. I just figured it was something I didn't understand, but I was betting on the Bible being correct rather than Billy Graham. And because, well, the Lord said we are going to be like him. As he was, so will we be in this world. And so that was one of the first things that I had seen. Why does the world love Billy Graham, but hate Jesus? Uh, you'll see, I have, a, I have a list of these things also in the description with some scriptures there. There is also going to be a link to a few videos and information on this. Uh, as I went on later on, I said I didn't look into this very much, but a key book that I saw uh, I'm not sure how long it was. It might have been. It might have been printed in 1999. Don't quote me on that. It was by, I believe, a Dr. Kathy Burns. It was called Billy Graham and His Friends. It's still available on Amazon. Uh, if you want to look for it, it has a, it's very well researched. Has a lot of good information on him. But uh, anyway, that was really what uh, turned it for me. Looking at this book. And as I said, most of these scriptures and some different references will be in the description, so you can take some more time if you like. One of the worst things that Billy Graham did was he was bringing Protestants back under the authority of the Pope. Billy Graham had a number of influential meetings with the Pope, at least five, I understand, from one of the interviews I saw. And he her heralded the, the Pope as the religious world leader. This is all a setup toward the time of the Antichrist and the one world government. You know, there was a reason for the Protestant Reformation. You know, the religion of Rome is not biblical Christianity. 
And yet Billy Graham did an awful lot to bring Protestants back under the umbrella of Rome, something that sheer violence never would have done. Another thing is that Billy Graham has said that there are many ways to heaven. This could be the subject of some debate, but you will see this in the videos that I have, they're linked. You will see him saying this. He did believe there were many ways to heaven. A person could be saved uh, through their own religious system. Um, I did look, there was, there was like one video I saw trying to debunk that aspect of Billy Graham. He had four messages uh, kind of spliced together from Billy Graham. And each one he was saying, Jesus is the only way, Jesus is the only way. And you can find that in his messages, but that's not all that he said. He certainly didn't. Billy Graham knew how to play an audience and he knew how to say the right things to the people he was speaking to. And so I just urge you to look into this for yourself. And of course, remember that many, many, many people love Billy Graham and they will be somewhat blinded by that. But God wants you to be alert to the angels of light. And even though Billy Graham is gone, worse deceptions are sure to come. Something else is that Billy Graham was a Freemason. You know, the Freemasons are one of those groups that are trying to bring, you know, world government to the earth. And the Illuminati and Freemasons, this is why Billy Graham was so popular. This is why he didn't get a lot through the main media set against him. This is why he was friends with so many politicians. And this is also proof that he believed there were many ways to heaven because this is what the Freemasons teach, that there are many ways up the mountain. You have to be believe in God to be a Freemason, but believing Jesus exclusively is, is not a part of Freemasonry. And I know this also because it was, it was extra confirmed to me because unfortunately someone very close to me kind of defected from true Christianity and went over to the Freemasons. Um, okay. One of the things is orchestrated altar calls. At the end of Billy Graham's uh, services that he would have, whether they were in stadiums, whether they were in, uh, I don't know where all he did. I always saw the ones in the stadiums as I was growing up, but we'd be broadcast, that's what we would watch. And you would see this at the end of his service he would be giving an invitation for Christ. And you would just see dozens and dozens of people. They're just flowing down the aisles. And it's like, wow, that's really great. All these people come to the Lord. Oh, must be such a great Christian nation we live in, this and that, the other thing. Well, I'm not saying that no one ever got saved. I'm not saying that. I think some probably did. But this was a little bit deceitful. Because Billy Graham would go into a town, a city, and he would work with the churches that were there. And what would happen is in advance, these churches would produce volunteers to go to these crusades. And these volunteers were, were going to the altar. They were supposed to be going to pray with the people that were coming to the altar, you know, supposedly for salvation. But it didn't look like that. It looked like they were going to the altar to be saved. And it was staged. They were set around the stadium in certain places and it was orchestrated for when they would be leaving. So it gave the appearance of many people coming up to the altar to receive Jesus as their savior. And this simply was not true. So like in my own church, the altar call was a big thing. But at the end of the altar call, the pastor would invite Christians to come up and pray with those that were there. So it was distinctly separated. But in this way, it was deceitful. And the scripture said, cursed is he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully. Another thing that happened with these supposed conversions is, you know, when these people were counseled after giving their, their lives to Christ or the big change that was supposed to have come, they were always counseled to go back to the church they came from. In other words, if it was a Muslim, they had to go back to the mosque. If they were a Catholic, they had to go to the Catholic church. This is one of the ways in which Billy Graham didn't make waves with the people that he was preaching to because he was very agreeable with them. They always got sent back to where they had come from. So how is it that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things pass away, behold, all things become new. But I guess it doesn't become new. They wouldn't advise them to do that. And they were doing that to please men. So if those people were really saved, 
How long would it last when they were being sent back to a system of unbelief that they had come from? Another thing about Billy Graham, uh, I just heard on one of these videos I had listened to, he believes in theistic evolution. In other words, he does not believe the biblical account in Genesis, especially chapters 1 through 11. Uh, theistic evolution basically believes that a God created everything to evolve. If you've ever looked at evolution, you should know it is not scientific. It violates lots of scientific laws, and it is entirely incompatible with the Bible, with the accounts of creation. But Billy Graham uh, is glad to believe that. Billy Graham was also a fan of uh, the American president, Bill Clinton. I don't know how many people are listening to this know much about Bill Clinton, but he, oh my word. Uh, anyway, you should probably look into Bill Clinton, but he claimed that Bill Clinton was a great Christian. At one point after his presidency, he said how he thought Bill Clinton would be taking uh, his place as an evangelist going around preaching. <laughs> Bill Clinton was... Uh, I believe he was impeached. He wasn't kicked out of office, but he was impeached. He had affairs with women. Um, he was in charge of the drug operation when he was governor in Arkansas. All kinds of just good good things about him. Uh, anyway, I, I can't get into I can't get into that. But Billy Graham praised Bill Clinton, saying that he was a great Christian man, and also uh, he it had been presented to. Billy Graham, why he wouldn't say anything to Bill Clinton. Uh, Bill Clinton had a habit of hiring homosexual workers for White House staff. And of course, the person is saying, why don't you ever confront the president of this kind of unchristian practice and how he, how he does this? And Billy Graham simply said, I, I could never do that because if I did, I would not be invited back to the White House. So you can see he loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Another thing that Billy Graham was noted for saying is that we can have sex in heaven. He said that if it takes sex to make you happy, then in heaven you will be able to have sex. This does not seem compatible with the scripture when Jesus says that we will be as the angels in heaven and we will not marry or be given in marriage. And uh, he did, the, the quote more or less was, whatever it takes to make us happy, what makes us happy now will make us happy then if it takes that and which, of course, scripturally is a total lie. Something else had happened. I had said about how Billy Graham was going to these communist countries. And I saw this, that when he went to these countries, he actually got to meet with some of the true Christian leaders in the Soviet Union. And, of course, they were asking him to intervene, to intercede with the government to help them get more liberty, more freedom. There are churches in these communist countries, but they are definitely dominated uh, they, are, they are told what they can say and not say. And they wanted the liberty, of course, to preach the Bible. And so they got to have a chance, they, ha they had a chance to have a meeting with Billy Graham and ask him for this. And what Billy Graham did was uh, he took their names and he turned them in to the KGB, the Russian secret police. Uh, that's, that's, this is one of the things that was predicted by Jesus. He said that many will betray one another in the end. And Billy Graham certainly betrayed the real church in the Soviet Union. And something that ought to be, you know, if there was nothing else, and there's a lot else, and there's a lot besides what I have here, especially of his associations. One of the things that's very disturbing is that Billy Graham had a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Did you know that? Along with, with great perverse stars, does anyone even know what Hollywood is all about? Unfortunately, today, Christians accept Hollywood just like it's no big deal. Well, they do some good things. They have some bad things. We cannot be unequally yoked with unbelief. You're talking about pornography. You're talking about murder. You're talking about all manner of sin and evil that Hollywood pushes. Even the name Hollywood, as my wife had found out in research, that the wood of the holly tree had been used traditionally it is what witches make their wands with. Is this what ha has happened, that Hollywood has cast a spell first on America and then on the world? So I just urge you to take a closer look at this, look at some of these links in the description, just to know this is a warning, not so much about Billy Graham, 
but about those that are to come, because those that are to come will be much worse than he. So please, when the Bible gives you warnings about the false teachers, take them seriously. Uh, none of us can know everything. And then trust your salvation only to Jesus and not in men. That is where we go wrong when we are elevating men on a pedestal. We were never meant to do that. May God bless you. I hope that the Lord can quicken this to your spiritual growth. Farewell.